Hello YouTube, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on our 97 triple locked Toyota Land Cruiser again. Uh, if you remember on the last video, I did a leak down test. During our leak down test, we found that cylinder number two and cylinder number four had some leakage past the exhaust valves. Uh, today what I'm going to do is uh, take a scope, a small scope that I have purchased it off of Amazon maybe three, four years ago. I've used it uh, here and there whenever I need. I think it was maybe 30 bucks, give or take. I'll put the link down in the description if you want to get your own, uh, and I'll show you exactly what it is here as well. So we're going to use the scope to get down into the both the combustion chambers and also the exhaust ports to see what the back of the valves look like. Before we get started, if you like this sort of content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell right next to it so you'll be notified every time there's a new video uploaded. And also check out the rest of the videos on the channel. There's lots of good content for 200 series Land Cruisers, uh, some boat content, and also a whole bunch around 80 series Land Cruisers. And if you're a returning uh, viewer, thank you for the continued support, all the comments and the encouragement. So here's the scope that I use. Uh, it's made by whatever this company's name is, Nida. I don't know why you say that. Um, they have two different sizes, one with a really long stem and one with a shorter stem. I got the one with a shorter stem. Let me see if I can get this open and show you what it looks like. All right, let's see what we've got here. So I've never used any of these attachments, but it's got these little attachments for the end. Um, I think they're little hooks and stuff in case you want to put it down in somewhere and hook onto something and pull it out, I guess. Um, this is the actual camera. Let me put the box away. It has an instruction sheet on there. It's pretty straightforward. Essentially, you're connecting to it over Wi-Fi. Um, there's an Android app, and I think there's an Apple equivalent called HD Wi-Fi. HD, like high definition. You download that, um, and don't bother opening the app yet, but you go uh, and turn this guy on after you've charged it. There's a charge port. So you turn it on. You see the light came on as well. Um, we'll give it a few seconds to boot up and we'll turn the, oh, there it is. So light's off now. And you see the indicator lights right here that are both on, meaning it's uh, active and ready to go. And what you do is you go to your Wi-Fi settings on your phone and you connect to the Wi-Fi uh, signal that has this in the name and then the password, the default password at least, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm connected to it. I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap this, get it ready to go. All right. You can see you've got plenty of length here. This is long enough for anything I'm gonna do. Um, but again, they do have a longer one. If you need something longer than this, I just don't know how you would control something that's that long. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to pull the paper towels out of number two and number four, go down in and check the uh, combustion chamber on top of the pistons, see what we can find there. And uh, then we're going to check out the exhaust ports on this side. That's the bottom. So scary. Hit the ground. We have a lot of carbon buildup in there. I'm willing to guess that nobody has ever run any, um, nobody's ever run any uh, sort of engine cleaner or fuel injector cleaner through this thing. That probably explains also why those valves are sticking. There's a lot of carbon buildup there. You know what? I'm gonna scope the other cylinders as well after this to see if the carbon buildup is um, unusually higher on these two. And if it is, that would definitely point us to injector number two and injector number four. Um, spraying at a different rate than the other cylinders and uh, adding to the to the carbon buildup issue. So this is this was cylinder number two. Here's cylinder number four. There. Oh, it's nothing. Here's cylinder number four. Um, it looks actually really nice and clean compared to number two. Number two has a ton of buildup in there. Now we're going to take a look at cylinder number one. This is number one we're looking at. All right, this is cylinder number one. Really nice and clean. Wow, I'm actually surprised how clean the piston tops are. Something's going on with number two. All right, now we're looking at cylinder number three. All right, everything looks good in here. 
Um, cylinder number three looks very clean as well. This is cylinder number five. Ooh. Cylinder number five has a lot of buildup in there as well. Um, quite a bit, actually. Looks like cylinder number two did. And this is cylinder number six. Oh, there. This is cylinder number six. Ugly. Um, ignore that little piece of debris. I think I just knocked that in there. Uh, I'm going to have to stick some uh, uh, air in there to get that out. But this is the top of cylinder number six, clean as well. Now I'm going to scope all of the exhaust valves. Um, initially, I was just going to look at number two and number four, but since number five and number two are the ones with the extra carbon buildup, I want to see all of them. So let's go through that. The exhaust port for cylinder number one. Let's see. Got the typical amount of gunk buildup in there. Want to see the back of the valve. It's not terrible. There's some buildup, but it's not horrible. Same here. It's not terrible, but there definitely is buildup. Let's take a look at cylinder number two. There's definitely a lot more buildup and scaling on cylinder number two. That's one of the exhaust valves. This is the other one. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more buildup there. Let's take a look at number three. Number three is not terrible. There's definitely buildup there. Here's the other one. Yep. Let's take a look at number four. Number four is actually fairly clean. All right, let's take a look at number five. All right, let's take a look at number six. Number six looks pretty good too. Okay, back to good quality video. How did that look, Aiden? Good. That looked good? How'd that look, Aiden? Bad. Pretty gross? Mm hmm So I wanted to show you guys with normal quality video what it looks like in here because with that scope, it looks a lot worse than it actually is. Uh, so that's cylinder number two right there that we were looking at just a minute ago. Here's number one. Here's number three. Here is number four. That is number five. And last, there's number six. So, I don't see anything that's terrible or beyond the norm. Um, for those of you that are not used to seeing the insides of the ports, you probably think that looks really gross, but trust me, that's pretty normal, especially for an engine that's uh, got a handful of miles on it. That was very interesting and, and useful information. Um, it's interesting that number five and number two have so much buildup in comparison to the rest. Uh, that tells me automatically that there is something going on causing that. Could be piston rings and oil getting past the piston rings and burning off in there. Uh, could be um, the injectors not opening at the same rate, dumping too much fuel in there. Um, causing um, some problems there. Could be a spark plug uh, not firing well. Could be a spark plug wire not uh, 
making good contact, could be a lot of things. But fact of the matter is, number two and number five have a lot of buildup in there compared to the other ones. We're over here by the intake manifold. So that's number one, number two, three, four, five and six. Looks pretty normal. For a motor that has this many miles on it, um, there's nothing unusual. And uh, there's definitely not anything unusual about number two and number five in particular. So I think we're okay there. There's nothing coming through on the intake side. I bet you that the injectors for number two and number five are not firing correctly. Or maybe the other ones aren't firing correctly. We don't know. But we're going to rebuild all of those as we go through this um, restoration on this Land Cruiser. And get it all uh, working well again. I'm going to clean up the carbon buildup on, uh, on the exhaust ports um, as much as I can with each of the valves closed. Essentially what you want to do is turn the crank uh, to where you have the cam lobes, these guys pointing upwards, so the valves are all the way shut. Um, and then you can go in with a brush or anything else and clean up as much as you can on the carbon buildup uh, by hand and, and use a, a nozzle on a vacuum cleaner, uh, maybe even like a tube taped to the end of the vacuum cleaner nozzle to clean that stuff out. Um, and, uh, and, and that should, you know, be enough to, to get it clean by hand without pulling the cylinder head off. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to run um, cleaners through the intake um, through vacuum hose connections once we get all of this put back together and running and that's going to take a while but um, there are some cleaners that definitely help clean this carbon buildup up uh, and get it to uh, be much more minimal nothing is going to take it away completely it just happens when you have an engine that's running uh, but we can definitely make it better and i think by doing those things we're going to get uh, much better seal on those exhaust valves on number two and number four, and we'll get the rest of them cleaned up very well. Thanks for joining us and watching this entire thing and going through this adventure with us. Aiden, say thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. See you next time.